the linebacker James Nesta, 6'4", yeah. 205, out of North Carolina. It's a big-time pickup for the Sooners. Um, you know, I think we've, we've talked about a little bit the past few weeks how Oklahoma fans are, you know, kind of notoriously impatient when it comes to some of these recruiting uh, decisions. When you saw Sammy Brown go to Clemson a couple of weeks ago, it was a concern. But this is a player that uh, he – he comps pretty well to everybody in the country, as you said. You know, six foot four, uh, two hundred pound guy. He's a, also an amazing pitcher, uh, so he's going to be like a uh, former Sooner, going to be playing on the baseball team as well. Um, this uh, brings brings heat. So big. It's a big part of. Uh, I think that was as big a part of his recruitment as anything was uh, providing a place for him to continue playing baseball as well. Obviously with Kyler Murray, it worked out pretty well. He was a first rounder in football and baseball. So situation where they feel like they can handle it there. Uh, you know, they've got, we've had another couple of guys that, are, that have played other sports and um, you've got an incoming guy that's going to be running track. So, uh, yeah, anyway, the, the linebacking core, it seems to continue to get better and better uh, as time goes on. And you obviously with Coach Venables, that's um, to be expected, I guess. We got uh, James Nesta checking in this past season. Yeah. Let me catch up on the numbers here. I just had them. Then Max oh, preps yeah. threw me a curve here. <laughs> Let's see. Shoot, I've got his offensive stats, not his defensive stats, but I know that I've got those somewhere. Yeah, 41 anyway. total tackles, nine sacks. Mm -hmm. I know that I had more. Nine sacks is quite a few that. from from the linebacker position, too, though you would think. This is a big guy. Um, I wouldn't worry as much about – about the stars with some of these guys. And that's not the way that coach Venables is going to recruit anyway. He's going to, they're going to recruit the guys they think fits the system. Um, and uh, again, after having just the champion barbecue this past weekend, the expectation is, and if you've been paying attention to some of these Twitter accounts of some of these kids, it, it's starting to appear that there could be some guys that are on their way to making a decision in the favor of Oklahoma. David Stone is going to be one of those guys that's going to be – he's still got another couple of official visits to go on. They want him to take those visits. Um, I think that he would have already – if he were if he were going to go to some of these other places like, say, Michigan State or uh, – in which he still has an official visit there. I think that may be his last one, though. Um, or, you know, Oregon, something like that. A lot of these guys are expecting – they want you to go ahead and commit while you're there. And so you're seeing a lot of flips that are happening. Florida, as you've seen, you know, they've had some guys that have flipped immediately. And they, I mean, they of course have had an amazing uh, last week or so as far as commitments are concerned, but none of these guys are really in your camp until they're on the dotted line. And if they're still taking visits, are they really, you know, committed to the program? And that's the whole thing with, uh, Coach Venables anyway, as we've talked about here in the past as well. He is looking to have you make that commitment, stick with that commitment, not be taking visits everywhere else. And I think that's a lot of the reason that you haven't seen some of these guys uh, already commit because <clears throat> I know for sure that David Stone has tried to commit <laughs> multiple times. And um, <laughs> you've heard the same thing with uh, Williams, Winery, people like that. It, but, you know, we were kind of talking about this on my show last night with uh, with Jay from Unfair Sports, and he was saying that he felt like this was a, that you're going to see some of these other guys um, flip, you know, from these other places. You know, as as great as as great a week as Florida had, how many of those guys are going to hang around? You know, we kind of saw the same thing with Notre Dame earlier earlier on too, where they had eight guys that were in in their fold, and all of a sudden they've got like two of them left. So, you know, it's just a, it's just a matter of, you know, this is the way that they're doing things. And I think, you're, as Jay was saying, I think that this way of doing things is probably going to catch on more than you might expect with some of these other places. That's the way they do it at Clemson. Certainly that's the way Brent yes. Venables and Dabo Sweeney teamed up to do it. They want people, they want players to be committed, locked in and have all of that decision-making process in their past and not just kind of do it on a whim and say, 
yeah, this feels right. This looks right. I'll commit, but I'm going to keep my options open and available. Sure. Of course, that's still there technically, but sure it is. without allowing them or encouraging them to continue to take visits, uh, I think it's going to prove out. If anybody's out there keeping track of flips, which I, I, I've i asked for this statistic in the past, right. I, I don't know that anybody's out there uh, to the degree of being a nerd to this point to keep track of, <laughs> I would love to know how many flips there are per program, That's per level of ranking, and mm -hmm. uh, to, to see if there are certain programs who are more susceptible to flips than others. But I would think going forward, Oklahoma would not be one of those. Well, in, in this past season, the you know, his first season in Norman, he had uh, the flip from the the – Texas kid. Oh man, I always forget his name at this point. Um, but um, uh, David Hicks. No, the, oh. it, it, the the Texas University of Texas. Uh, he was a legacy kid. Oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue too. Uh, anyway, he was he was more, and that was a situation where I felt like he was his family was a little upset that he didn't already have a scholarship offer from UT. Um, and he gets into the Oklahoma side of things, you could still see they were going to games every weekend. His dad played for for Texas. So, you know, they kind of saw that one coming. And then you also had uh, – then there was Anthony Evans who flipped to Georgia. Um, his family was from Georgia. His mother wanted to go to that. They, and, and Coach Venables let him go on this official visit so that he could, quote, take his mom. I think they kind of saw that coming. But when you have those two things happen, you kind of have to expect that they're not going to he's not going to continue to allow it. And if you you know, I mean, again, we've talked about this quite a bit, but whenever they were talking about, uh, well, the story in the athletic that was done that he was saying, you know, he's not going to deal with drama in recruiting. If, if they're drama in recruiting, it's going to be drama in the locker room, drama, drama, drama. He's not having it. And I think that that's kind of bearing out. You had the the Juco kid that uh, had committed to OU. And then he took the official visit to, I think, Indiana or Illinois, something like that, and they pulled the scholarship. So um, I think that it's obvious that that's the way they're going to go about things. You were, uh, I agree as far as Dabble Swinney, same way. They're, you know, that's the way they want to do things. And it kind of makes sense. You know, it's if you're going to do uh, – yeah, and I don't agree with this part. Yeah, Phil, Phil BV wants – OU needs the players more than they need OU. That, I don't I don't agree with that. And that, if you're ending up getting the wrong players, then then what good does that really do, you know? When you look at Texas A&M, who they've used money instead uh, for this, you know, to kind of use it as an enticement. I know that's against the rules, you know, not that the NCAA has any teeth anymore. But when you start looking at that, how many guys were they able to keep around, you know? If you're not going to have them in the program for two, three, four years, then what's the point of getting them to say that? Colton Vasek, yes, Jimmy, thank you. Uh, that was who we were talking about with the, that flip that he went back to Texas. That's not how you – I feel like with these programs, if you have done the things, particularly on the defensive side, I know he hasn't been a head coach up until now. When you take a look at what they have done and the players that they have put into the NFL – uh, I would think that players need this coaching staff more than they need them. Uh, they're going to put you, give you an opportunity to be in the NFL. And there's not a lot of coaches out there. That, I don't know many defensive coaches that you would say are better than Brent Venables. So, you know, do they need players? Of course. Does it have to be a certain one? No. You know, there's going to be certain fits for these guys. They're not just going to throw scholarship offers at everybody out there just because they have a certain star number next to their name. And so that's, you know, like is it up, up there, you're talking about many three stars. Three stars are the lifeblood of any college football team. I don't care if we're talking about Alabama and Georgia. Three stars are important. And, <clears throat> the, and we all know that that system is not perfect either. The ranking systems. Far so, from perfect. Yes. Far from it, yes. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, when you take it as a whole – it's pretty darn accurate, but far, yeah. far from perfect. And we could talk we, about a lot of guys that did that came in as three stars and oh, left as first rounders. You know, Isaiah Simmons being one of them. You know, just the one yeah. that comes first off well, the top we of your head. Sit here for the next three days and cite, <laughs> yeah, five stars that are busts and three stars that are 
Yeah. Hall yeah. of Fame caliber players like JJ Brian Watt. Erlacher. I don't even know if he was a three star. I think he was a two star. Brian Erlacher had no stars. He had one scholarship offer <laughs> when yeah. he came out. So, yeah. But as a whole, if you look at the talent rankings, it pretty much coincides with the teams making the playoffs, especially the top three, especially yeah. Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State. Sure. And even Oklahoma. Um, you know, at, at the point where those three schools, Oklahoma and LSU pretty much, and Clemson, of course, were, they pretty much comprised through 2019, the playoff almost exclusively right. those entities at that point, the team total talent rankings, according to two, four, seven were like one through six, right. Those schools. So I do believe in the rankings overall. Oh no, and I do too. I'm not. I'm not saying that part of it. I, I, to me though, there's there's a lot of guys that you're gonna, you know, the, he was a part of that staff that was in that, you know, top tier of guys that they were getting, you know, and a lot of that had to do with some of the guys they were recruiting. But he's, uh, you know, I remember last year when he was talking about that he had challenged his assistants to go out there and find those guys that nobody knew about that were out there because he knew they were out there. Um, and as far as it goes with this, not recruiting another player at your position, no, they take, that's the, that's the agreement that they actually make is we're taking this one off of our board for this, for this cycle. Now, as far as for in the position moving forward, that's not the, that's not the agreement that they make, but they do make that agreement. If he's going to pull, you know, say, uh, well, linebacker or defensive tackle or whatever it is, let's just say that's what it is. Obviously, they need depth at that position. No, de no defensive tackle is playing sixty snaps. It just doesn't happen. So, there's going to be a certain number of them. But it, when it comes to, they do take that off of their board. So that's why he expects for you to hold up your end of it as well. So, when it comes to fairness and stuff like that, that is the fair part. And and they're committed to you. He wants you to be committed to them as well. But again, I, I just feel like. And I'm not I'm not bad off in the ranking system. I agree with you. You know, I think that there's some guys that are underranked a little bit, but I also think there's probably some guys that get overrated a little bit as well. In the end, it's not a perfect science, but there's a lot of guys out there too, you know. And then you get the three major ones, you kind of have them. The reason that I like the composite from the 247 is it's taking the rankings that are from the the major recruiting services, you know, ESPN, um, rivals on three and then two, four, seven. There's so four of them. They kind of take those in and, you know, give it all together because there's a lot of guys out there and it's just a lot. It's hard for everybody to see everybody in every snap, you know? Um, but I mean, I can think of a guy that, um, of a, of a receiver from Texas. He played six, a football in Texas, got to the playoffs, the second round of the playoffs, no stars. He's going to play Juco ball this year. Crazy, you know, <laughs> crazy. But that's it. It just happens sometimes. Jason, I think you hit on a point that uh, gets glossed over or is unknown by a ton of people in regards to this commitment going both ways. So yeah. this isn't just Brent Venables demanding that you don't go as a commitment here at Oklahoma, go anywhere else, take other visits that you are firmly entrenched here. But he is making that commitment to the student athlete as well to say, we have your commitment, therefore you have our commitment. We are going through or going to X number of players for this position. Let's mm -hmm. say you're the third one and we're going to shut down our, our recruiting now at three because you're the third guy and we promised you a spot and therefore you committed to us, we commit to you. So that's the that's the deal that makes total sense and it's, it's a, a trust factor right. uh, that's built there. Yeah, and that's if you've exactly. I think a trust factor is a perfect way to put that. If you have, if you're going to trust the guy to get out there on the field, and and make the plays for you. You have to be able to trust him at his word to not get in trouble, not to do the things. And again, yeah, it's this is all goes back to that relationship recruiting. You know, this is that instead of recruiting based on nil or whatever, um, that's uh, yeah. And I mean, when they when they end up at number four and that, that's that's a perfect argument right there they have the number four class overall in the country and 
it was the most balanced class you've probably seen in the history of the program. Certainly since it would, you know, since Coach Stoops left. Six guys in the top 100, four of those guys were defensive players. In the past, if the best ranking they'd ever had had been four as well, it was when they had two five star receivers come in plus Spencer uh, Rattler. So, yeah, I mean, that's all well and good, but that was off of three five star guys. And then you had a, you know, you just haven't seen them recruit as well on defense. And that's where Oklahoma needs it the most. They're still going to go out there and put up big numbers offensively. Jeff Levy's proven that he can do that. And they're continuing to pick up big guys on that end of it, too. But I would just say that, you know, it's, uh, again, you have to, you don't necessarily have to love it. And I know there are some fans out there that don't, as far as the entire, we make a commitment to you, you make a commitment to us. And I think it's just because they are used to seeing some early commits or whatever to the program. What I, The main guys that they're after are on the defensive line, and none of those guys, almost none of them, are committed to any school. So until those guys get ready to make that commitment, that's when you would probably want to worry. I'm still of the opinion that they're going to get three of them. I think that it's going to be David Stone, Williams, Winery, and it's looking like possibly I've been hearing in the last few days that Nigel Smith is pretty close as well.